Welcome everyone. Here are three examples of activities that you can complete with students that teach them a little bit about how to use some basic formulas in Google Sheets. You can see that my first example right here is a budget. I have income, expenses, and then income minus expenses. I have another tab down here called income. So let's say that you have income, hopefully, and you get paid twice a month. If you get paid in a different cycle, you might have to rework this or change it a little bit, but let's say that this is my payment here and I get $900 on the first and 600 on the second. So I'm then going to use the average function under the sum, select average, and then highlight the range I want to average. And now I'm going to format both of those so they are formatted as money or as currency. And then students can learn to drag this down so they can get an average for each of the months. And then here I can get an average of my averages. So I can select average and then highlight everything. Now, of course, this won't work because it's going to be division by zero. So I can take these out and just drag each month down as it comes about. I see that I went a little too far there. So let me redo that. So obviously, obviously my average is going to be 750. So if I go back over to my budget tab, I can say equals and then go back to this cell, click there, hit enter, and now notice that it will bring that average in. If I have two or three different jobs, I can list the sources right here, and then I can total these up and select sum and add all three of those up. And that's going to be my monthly income. In this column, I'm going to need to list all of my expenses. So everything on here, I've given some examples. You may have others, you may not have some of these, and that's okay. But you're going to need to list everything that is an expense, and it may take a few moments of thinking to figure out what all those are going to be. So your investments are things you pay to yourself, like that you put in your savings for future use. So maybe I put uh, 200 there, and maybe my rent or mortgage is 500, whatever the case might be. You're going to fill all of those in, and then you're going to format those so they have a monetary value. And then for the total, you are going to, again, use the sum and highlight all of those cells. And notice the formula right here, equals sum, parentheses, E2, E16 and everything between E2 and E16. I hit enter. Now income minus expenses is pretty easy. I'm going to select the income right here and then I'm going to subtract the expenses. So notice I just typed B5 minus E17 and I hit enter. So I have $50 left each month. Now let's add a little bit more to that conditional formatting. So let's say that I don't want my cell phone bill to be over $100 a month, but it's 105. So what I can do is I can go to format and then conditional formatting, and I can change this. So if the cell is greater than 100, it's going to highlight it in yellow. So now I know that I went over budget in that, uh, for that month, or for that expense for that month, excuse me. And the same thing with income minus expenses. Obviously I don't want to be in the negative here, so I could go to format and I could go to conditional formatting. And if that number is less than zero, maybe I'm going to highlight it uh, again as yellow. And I can do that. And that formatting will stick with that. Now, this is a very generic, very basic spreadsheet. You need to clean this up. One thing I could do to suggest, or one thing I would suggest doing for that is going to alternating colors and formatting this so it looks nice and neat as a table. You might also consider highlighting, or excuse me, bolding uh, the bottom line and the top line so that it stands out a little bit more. And you have several different styles you can play with here. Here's another fun way to use Google Sheets. You can use it to translate. You can see here that I have an English phrase. It's been translated into French. How do you do that? Pretty easy, actually. You type the equal sign. Equal sign lets you know that you're creating a formula. I type Google Translate, and then a left parenthesis, which comes in by default. I click on the cell I want to trans uh, translate. Type in a comma. Type the language I'm going from. English is abbreviated EN in quotes, comma the language I'm going to, which is French, and then a right parenthesis. Of course, French is in quotes as well. I hit enter, there's nothing there. I'm gonna type yes, and it takes a moment, that becomes we. Oui. So now you could also go French to English, any number of languages you can do. If you just do a Google search, you can find the codes to use for these. Um, you would want to clean this up a little bit. So maybe again, I'm going to format this as a table. So go format, alternating colors. If I don't like the gray, I can use another color. I can also customize that right here if I would like. Uh, maybe I want to accentuate the titles right here so that someone knows exactly what language it's being translated. So uh, there's English, there's French. Maybe I bold these, maybe I center these. Again, this is a, a lot of this is personal preference. 
but it's a great way to build a simple translation. Uh, and you can have students work with a language teacher to find out maybe what are the 25 most common phrases that need to be translated. You could also have an open area where a traveler or someone who needs something translated could simply type it in and the translation could come out. So that's a translation machine using Google Sheets. Here's a third example of a fun way to use Google Sheets. You can basically create a paint by number. You can see right here that I have ones and twos. Uh, so if I type this, I'm going to get, uh, if I type a one, I'm going to get purple. If I type a two, I'm going to get gray. How did I do this? First of all, I shrunk the cells or the columns, excuse me. Uh, I formatted those. I resized them so they were, I believe, a 25. And then I highlighted the cells where I was going to create the paint by number. And I went to format, conditional formatting. And then I selected a rule. If the cell's value is exactly one, then I made it purple. And I applied that. And then I added another rule and I said, if the cell's value is exactly, uh, text is exactly two, then I made it a gray. I don't remember which gray, so I'll just go with this one. That wasn't quite dark enough, so let's go with this one. And so now, same thing over here. So if I type one, I'm going to get purple. If I type two, I'm going to get gray. And students can use this to create any sort of pattern. You can calculate area. Uh, students could create an actual paint by number with a picture. I would suggest probably some guide on another tab where you're giving, instruct, uh, you're giving instructions in terms of what you want to input, like one, two, one, two, so that you get the results you want. Otherwise, people will just be guessing as to how you got this exactly until they figure out the pattern. But maybe that's part of the, the plan as well, having someone figure out the pattern. But you can use conditional formatting to create a pixel art paint by number in Google Sheets. There's three examples of fun activities that you can use with students in Google Sheets. I hope you find them interesting. Thank you.